Toby. Just let me put this on the uh, full screen. Um, okay. So um, I will be talking to you about uh, why our cities um, need care. Um, this is directly lifted from my, my recent dissertation from last year. Uh, it's entitled Embracing the Other Through a City That Cares, Recognizing Impacts of the COVID-19 Pandemic on London's Filipino Health and Care Community. Um, so just a caveat, uh, this talk is not going to be about uh, planning per se. This is at the intersection of geography, of culture, and of uh, I guess ethnic studies and a little bit of urban theory because some people might expect it to be about planning. But anyway, um, I will also be uh, lifting just the highlights of this research so I don't have to cram like 15,000 words into 10 minutes, but you may read it for free at kandunga.org.uk or researchgate.net um, under my name. So uh, let's get to it. I want to begin by um, establishing one of uh, the very basic concepts of uh, urban studies. And this is uh, that space is relational. So what do we mean by this? Um, people shape spaces simply, and in turn, um, spaces shape people. You know, the relationships that people have and people create and people produce in a given space is what gives it identity and what gives it meaning to become a place. And this is true for cities. You know, it's true for Manila and it's true for London. Um, I was in London when uh, all the, you know, first wave of the lockdowns globally were established in different countries. And during the time, I guess, like a lot of us, we were like on social media and I was like just going through Twitter a lot and Twitter became a digital obituary for many of our Filipino nurses and um, uh, other care workers. And uh, that just was so personal to me and that resonated with me so much because I have like good friends there who are, who are nurses and you know our nurses were like dying left and right and the service of the NHS that's the National Health Service of the UK and I was just pondering so hard on um, the fact that um, Filipinos despite being very very critical you know playing critical role and at the literal forefront of the hospitals and battling COVID-19 weren't that much you know recognized or visible to why London is uh, as a city very influential or great or powerful or like you know one of the A plus plus cities we were not um, included in the understanding of how London became an urban and you know if if you live there uh, you know Asian just pertains usually pertains to you know someone who's Indian or Middle Eastern or Chinese, but the Filipino, we were always an other, and that made us an invisible other despite our critical role. So um, that was quite ironic because London is a city that is uh, branded as diverse, and it is diverse, like 40% of their population is like for the BAM here, the Black, Asian, and Minority Ethnic Group. However, the city still you know, had a hostile environment towards migrants, uh, very ironically you now. And, um, you know, this hostile environment policy could be tabled like, for a different separate discussion because it's a very long policy and like, like, uh, rooted in their historical, you know, their history. But what I can say is that these hostile policies actually affect very much our Filipino uh, brothers and sisters, you know, and it, this, this hostile policy manifests in their lives. Uh, day to day, like in my interviews, I encountered like nurses and domestic workers who are, um, you know, there are 15 of them crammed in a flat, you know, that, that's their housing condition. Um, I've encountered like caregivers who were forced to report uh, for uh, duty in care homes despite being terribly sick with COVID-19 just because they were the one, nobody else was like available, they would like be the ones to be forced to do it. I've encountered nurses, uh, sorry, domestic workers who have never really wanted to live in London, but have been living there for 20 years only because um, the bit bit sila ng amo from the uh, from Hong Kong or uh, Saudi Arabia, and they were just like baggage, you know. At the passport, as mama sa London, 20 years na nandun, staying there. 
I've encountered domestic workers who have been living in the city for years on end, but are only inside the house. They are confined inside the house. So um, what, uh, I took a good look at the city, you know, and the spaces that they referred to. And uh, these two visuals, you can see like to the, to the bystander, like, or someone who visits London probably would say, oh, wow, this is like an elite hospital and an affluent home. And it's, you know, beautiful. It's a beautiful surrounding. And that's, you know, the very common perception. But if we try to you know, shift our perspective a bit, you know, to our Filipino brothers and sisters, uh, these spaces are actually uh, cages. You know, they, uh, the city and the spaces of the city become attractive. to them. These are the very spaces where uh, hostility happens. You know, in hospitals, racism, xenophobia, uh, uh, phobia, sorry, um, happen. You know, between between nurses and doctors or Filipinos and their patients and even other colleagues inside the you know affluent homes. This is in West London, which was cited a lot in my study. Um, uh, you know, um, restrictions happen, you know, Filipinos are confined within the spaces of this house and even abuse happens to, to, our, uh, to our Filipino community. So what, what happens there is that there is a certain, uh, if, if you think about it really um, deeply, hostility happens in this space and yet Filipinos continue to provide care through their work. And there is a sort of, um, there is a duality, there is a, uh, certain symbiosis that happens between hostility and care. And, um, you know, I, I thought more about this, like in writing my dissertation, I was like, why do we, uh, why are we so associated with care? And, it, and then um, I'd like to share with you some things I cited in my literature, you know, Catherine Sinisa Choi's Empire of Care, which is about Filipino nurses in the U.S., uh, Valerie Francisco Manchavez's Labor of Care, and Deidre McGee's An Archipelago of Care. You know, these are all about Filipino uh, nurses and care workers abroad and you know care is just plastered right in the title and this, these are like um, brilliant ethnographic studies that uh, tell us Filipinos really epitomize care and we are the carers uh, of the world and if you continue to think about that more you start to question why do we care so much and where does this caring identity come from so in my research I began to Revisit, you know, the seminal works of psychology and Filipino, um, as Filipino psychology, and also the Filipino virtue ethics. And I got to recall, you know, that as a as a people, as an ethnic group, uh, Filipinos have a very relational culture. And as I established in the beginning of my slides, you know, a space is produced relationally, and that is at the heart of our culture. And another thing that I revisited is the word kapwa. You know, uh, kapwa, pahikipag kapwa, kapwa tao. Um, it's not just, you know, neighbor, which is like kapit bahay, but kapwa pertains to a self and the other as one, you know, a shared self, a shared identity. Um, in Western literature, we hear about the term othering a lot, and uh, othering is, you know, somebody else apart from me. And that pertains to someone who is non, not the white cisgender man. It's an other. But to the Filipino, the other is, a, is also the self. So there is a certain equality in our understanding and how we um, relate with other people and how we uh, interact and how we connect with other people, not just in our work, but in our everyday life. And Kapwa gives a sense of empathy to how we how we live you know when we are displaced from outside the philippines to london or whatever city that that uh that give that shows how we have an effective concern for others it can even lead to you know sacrificial relationships at extreme cases and this explains um why you know uh a lot of our nurses have to live separate from their families uh, here in the Philippines, uh, it tells us why um, caregivers who are mothers would love yung alagang bata nila uh, the same way they would love their own child and, and you know, like, give their all, you know, that's the, that's the trait of the Filipino um, in their work, like, we do our work to the best that we can and we're, like, quiet about it and to, to quote some of my part, uh, interviewees, uh, subservient even, but uh, they don't complain, but they just give it, you know, they, they try to 
some of the domestic workers I talked with would say, uh, we, we, we do not just provide care, like a service. We give ourselves to become caring. They didn't like refer the, you know, psychology of Philippine or rich ethics, but I know that's what they were trying to, to express, you know, when, when, I, when I interviewed them. So um, care is something that is displaced. Um, and, you know, um, it's, it's something we really have to think about. It's not just London. There's, you know, Filipinos are all over the world. Like US, we have the Middle East, we have Hong Kong, so many domestic workers there. There's Japan, there's, you know, Sydney. We're, we're everywhere. We're the carers of the world, as I said. And, you know, um, what I want to point out here is that in the displacing care, we, you know, we Filipinos, we, um, we celebrate our OFWs as people who give remittances and we, we praise them for that. But that is an incomplete kind of recognition. And um, what is important here is that we trace back, you know, the lines of connection by these displaced mothers who became nurses or who became workers to their families. You know, some families, have, many families have been broken. You know, fathers uh, left here at home have to... Uh, Taken two parental roles, be the mother. Children have had broken families, you know. And I think every Filipino would be able to relate to having at least an, a nurse friend or a nurse relative, or you know, someone in the extended circle. And it it holds true for so many of us. And this is reflective of how, you know, London as a city as well um, celebrates diversity, celebrates um, celebrates you know migrant workers. And yet, does not pause to follow the lines of connection from the uh, migrants' uh, work. Sorry, from the migrants' um, the, the origin or the country. You know, they don't uh, they don't pause to follow that connection. What is the impact outside of the city? And uh, what's important here is that cities have a big responsibility for that recognition because that is the way that we you know achieve. Co true co wellness between differences, between diversity, that is how we, uh, how we achieve equality. It's being responsible. A place has to be responsible. A city has to be responsible to be caring enough to know those connections around the world. And that is how I argue that we need to have cities that care more. Um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, cities of care. I, I tried to introduce that spaces of care and cities of care uh, in this uh, research. So just, uh, just to end this, um, you know, there's so many things going on in our world right now, you know, like so much hostility, like we see it in political injustices, we see it in you know, killings left and right, disinformation, trolling campaigns. You know, it's just a lot of hurt that's going around. And, you know, care is something that counters that in a given space. And just to throw it out for maybe a food for thought for our audiences, uh, I, want, I want to ask, you know, you, and I want to ask myself as well, how do you produce space? How do we produce spaces? Uh, and what kind of relationships do we produce and create in our cities? Like, in Metro Manila, like in Baguio, in Cebu, Deva, but, but uh, all the cities that we have here, uh, how do we actually shape our cities? Do we foster care or are we instruments that add hostility to these uh, places and these spaces? You know, because like, like we have to be accountable and responsible for every action we do. And care is something that is most important and central to actually counting all the hurt that, that happens. You know? So, yeah, um, yeah, just that's just something I, I wanted to throw out. And I guess I'll have other slides. No, okay. So um, I guess that's, that's that's the end of my presentation on, on cities of care. Uh, there is so so much else to highlight from the dissertation, but uh, that's for a separate um, uh, reading, I guess. And and just just to end, um, I promised this uh, to to my friends in Kanlungan. If if you do read the dissertation and visit their site, please consider donating to their work for, um, you know, uh, for migrant welfare. They're doing an excellent job uh, taking care of our Filipino community in, in the United Kingdom. So yeah, I guess let's go to the question and answer. Thank you so much, Regine. So, okay, you've given us a 
insight to, into the research that you did in London. Now, how would we be able to take certain parts of that and apply it here in the Philippines? Yeah, um, well, you know, it's not really an application. You know, it, I, I would say that, you know, care or like all of this translates into policy. You know, policy can also be um, restrictive. Policy can also be abusive or exploitative. And design can also be hostile in some ways. And design can be like thoroughly elite that hurts some people, you know, um, and designers and professionals and planners and all of us, you know, working in the built environment and like thinking critically about spaces have a responsibility to incorporate care specifically into how they, how they design, how they, you know, champion policies, how they craft policies even, you know, that can translate to housing, that can translate to street design, all of those things. So it, it could be applicable, I guess, to any, to any city, not, not, just, not just London. It's, it's I think, all, all kinds of spaces and work Thank that goes into that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Regine.